Megasign provides an extensive range of assay kits for use in various assay formats, including auto analyzer, microplate, and manual spectrophotometer. This endocellulase assay kit can be used to accurately measure endocellulase in various sample types throughout industries such as biofuels and research. This video tutorial will demonstrate the use of the assay kit with a grain sample and the kit standard using the manual spectrophotometer format. The kit is available in two pack sizes, KCEL G52V and KCEL G54V, which provide reagents for up to 120 or 240 manual assays respectively, and is supplied with a detailed data booklet. This assay is specific for the measurement of endocellulase. The principle of the enzymatic reaction involved in the measurement of endocellulase is shown in this figure. Measurement of endocellulase requires two enzymatic reactions. In the first reaction, blocked 4-nitrophenol beta-D cellopenticide is hydrolyzed by the endocellulase. In the second reaction, the excess levels of beta-glucosidase rapidly hydrolyzes the unblocked colorimetric oligosaccharide to free D-glucose and 4-nitrophenol. Addition of an alkali solution terminates the reaction and develops the yellow phenolate color, which is measured by absorbance at 400 nanometers. Prior to sample analysis, prepare the required additional reagents as described in the kit data booklet. Weigh 60 grams of glacial acetic acid into a 200 milliliters beaker. Then add this to a stirring beaker of 800 milliliters of distilled water, marked buffer. Wash the original beaker into the 800 milliliters of distilled water using a wash bottle. Adjust the pH to 4.5 using 4 molar NaOH. Pour into a 1 litre volumetric flask and make up to 1 litre using distilled water. Decant into a 1 litre Duran bottle. This is concentrated acetate buffer A. Measure out 100 millilitres of concentrated acetate buffer and add to 850 millilitres of distilled water in a stirring beaker. Check the pH and adjust if required using 1 molar NaOH or 1 molar HCl to pH 4.5. Pour into a 1 litre volumetric flask and make up to 1 litre using distilled water. Weigh out 1 gram of BSA and add to the volumetric flask. Invert to dissolve. Weigh out 0.2 grams of sodium azide. And add to the volumetric flask. Invert to dissolve. Decant into a one liter Duran bottle. This is acetate extraction or dilution buffer B. Weigh 78 grams of sodium dihydrogen orthophosphate and add this to a stirring beaker of 800 milliliters of distilled water, marked buffer. Wash original beaker into the 800 milliliters of distilled water using a wash bottle. pH using four molar NaOH until pH six is reached. Pour 
pour into a one litre volumetric flask and make up to one litre with distilled water. Invert to dissolve. Decant into a 1 litre Duran bottle. This is concentrated phosphate buffer C. Add 100 millilitres of concentrated phosphate buffer to 850 millilitres of distilled water in a stirring beaker. Check pH and adjust if required using 1 molar NaOH or 1 molar HCl to pH 6. Pour into a 1 litre volumetric flask and make up to 1 litre with distilled water. Invert to dissolve. Weigh out 0.2 grams of sodium azide. And add to the volumetric flask. Invert to dissolve. Decant into a 1 litre Duran bottle. This is phosphate extraction or dilution buffer D. Weigh out 20 grams of Tris buffer salt, B Tris 500, and add to 900 millilitres of distilled water in a stirring beaker. Check the pH and adjust if required using 1 molar NaOH or 1 molar HCl to pH 10.0. Pour into a 1 litre volumetric flask and make up to 1 litre with distilled water. Decant into a 1 litre Duran bottle. This is stopping reagent. Additional reagent preparation is now complete. Prior to sample analysis, the kit components should be prepared as described in the kit data booklet. The cell G5 reagent is prepared by addition of 0.1 millilitres of bottle 2 to one vial of bottle 1. Bottle 1 should then be mixed well prior to use. Pipette 9.5 millilitres of buffer B into a 13 millilitre polypropylene tube. Pipette 0.5 millilitres of bottle 3 into buffer B and vortex to mix. In this video, we demonstrate how to prepare both liquid and powder enzyme extracts. Add one milliliter of liquid enzyme preparation to a 50 milliliter volumetric flask. Make up to the mark with dilution or extraction buffer, either buffer B or D as required. This is the original extract. Weigh one gram of powder enzyme into a weigh boat. Record the exact weight and add to a 50 milliliter volumetric flask. Washing the weigh boat and make up to the mark with dilution or extraction buffer, either buffer B or D as required. Add a stir bar 
and stir gently for 15 minutes. Clarify by filtration into a 100 ml Duran bottle. This is the original extract. Tenfold dilutions should be performed if required using buffer B or D. One milliliter of original extract should be added to nine milliliters of appropriate dilution buffer in a suitable size polypropylene tube. And vortex to mix. 10 fold cereal dilutions can be prepared in this manner. Follow the assay procedure on page 5 of the data booklet. In this demonstration, we are using a grain sample, one control and their corresponding blanks. Dispense 0.1 ml aliquots of cell G5 reagent solution directly into the bottom of 13 ml glass test tubes. and pre-incubate at 40 degrees Celsius for three minutes. Also, pre-incubate diluted cellulase solutions at 40 degrees Celsius for three minutes. To each tube containing cell G5 reagent solution, add 0.1 milliliters of cellulase dilution to the bottom of the tube. Stir on a vortex and incubate for exactly 10 minutes. At the end of the 10 minute incubation step, stop the reaction by the addition of 3 milliliters of stopping reagent and mix thoroughly by vortex. To prepare sample blanks, add 3.0 milliliters of stopping reagent to 0.1 milliliter cell G5 reagent solution and mix thoroughly by vortex. Add 0.1 milliliters of diluted enzyme preparation and mix thoroughly by vortex. After the reaction has been stopped, record the absorbance of all tubes using a spectrophotometer set to read at 400 nanometers. The absorbance readings of the sample and the blank reactions are used to calculate the endocellulase concentrations in the original samples. When performing this test using the pre-installed protocol on the Megaquant Wave Spectrophotometer, the results will be automatically calculated and printed via the onboard printer, or the data can be exported to a computer using the SF Capture software. Please see our Megaquant Wave video for further details. If the results output are raw absorbance values for both blank and samples, the calculations of endocellulase activity can be performed manually as described in the calculation section of the kit booklet.
Megazyme has also developed specific Excel-based MegaCalc applications for each Megazyme kit to allow quick and easy results analysis. Results can be analysed using the MegaCalc application specific to this endocellulase assay procedure, which is available to download free of charge from the Megazyme website. The MegaCalc spreadsheet provides full instructions for use. Open the MegaCalc worksheet and input the following. Sample details and sample identifier. Absorbance readings for the blanks and samples. Alter the sample volume if a volume other than the default 0.1 milliliters is used. Alter the total assay volume if a volume other than the default 3.2 milliliters is used. Alter the incubation time if a time other than the default 10 minutes is used. If dilution of the sample has been performed, then input the dilution factor used. If no further dilution was performed, the dilution factor is 1. Alter the sample weight and extract volume. If a weight other than 1 gram and an extract volume other than 50 milliliters is used. When all of the data has been entered, the cellulase units per gram is automatically calculated in the original sample.